had been feeling uneasy on Anzac days, uh, not being included really, uh, and uh, not just me personally, but people who've come from other parts of the world. I approached the local RSL sub-branch and suggested that could we have, just at the official ceremony, placing a flower or just a symbolic gesture being included. Uh, the meeting was very friendly, but the answer in the letter then was absolutely no. And that that's made me think, well, then I have to organize something myself. And welcome everybody to our multi-faith and multicultural service of reconciliation. I'm Larissa, Larissa Barnes, and with Sabina Balcherite and Margaret Long, we are the Remembering and Healing Old Wounds group. I'd like to welcome you all here today to acknowledge all, all our servicemen and all those who have suffered in war. Not only the servicemen or the people from this country, but all victims of war. I am supporting the event here today. Um, many years ago when I was uh, much younger, I served uh, six years as a professional soldier with the uh, regular Australian Army and uh, I spent four and a half of those years with the SAS regiment and uh, of that time um, I served ten months operationally on their counter-terrorist group. I would like to welcome you to the Wyabal Wujibal country, the land of my ancestors, the land that we stand on today. Reconciliation is everyone's business. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. And there have been many battles fought on this land of ours. Now would Sabina and Margaret please return um, Japanese military sword. This sword was given to us um, through Father Paul in Sydney, who's been supporting all our work. Someone gave me a sword, a widow gave me a sword that her husband had brought back from New Guinea. And so that's how I became involved. I was very happy to be in a little way involved in this whole process here. We need to embrace the people who live in our community, who come from our former enemy's homeland. They are the sons and daughters of people that my father and grandfather fought against, but my generation and future generations doesn't want to hold on to any bitterness. True courage uh, doesn't involve weapons and uh, physical harm to people. Um, it, view, it involves uh, having the courage to step up and be heard, having uh, the, uh, the courage to be seen for what you believe in. So it's a challenge to the mainstream culture, particularly the culture that uh, surrounds our celebration of Anzac and the, the Anzac tradition, uh, which is uh, something I was raised on as a child. a lot to our community on the eve of Anzac Day to have a group in our community gather to remember, remember old hurts, remember the past, but to focus on healing and focus on the present and the future. 
I think uh, the, greatest, uh, the greatest gift we can give ourselves is to have the courage and the maturity to self-examine. As a people, as a nation, if we have the courage and the maturity to, to look at our history and recognise uh, the mistakes we've made and to learn from those mistakes rather than to simply uh, reminisce about the event. Ask the river to take them and spread them. Uh, tonight I'm returning um, a flag my father brought back, a Japanese flag my father brought back from the war. Um, I'll be returning that to Reverend Watanabe at the, uh, at, at the event tonight. When Dad moved away from our house, he left things behind and, um, and that, that flag was one of them. And, and to me, that was a connection to my father, so that flag meant my father to me. And, and I'd really like to say that the flag is returned with deep respect for all people that have suffered in war. And really, it's a gesture of reconciliation and healing for the past. But most of all, it's a hope for the future that maybe the world can find more peaceful ways to resolve conflicts.